Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to be starting off a new series. And this series is going to be on algorithms and data structures. And we'll get into what both of those are in, in a little bit, but for now let me explain why I'm going to split this off into its own series rather than just having this be part of my earlier programming series. Realistically, the topics covered within this series are a subset of things that computer scientists will learn and are very frequently used in order to solve problems in the computer science world. And it makes sense to have those affiliated with my series on programming computer science. However, the problem is, is that many of the episodes we're going to be dealing with in this series are not going to end up involving us actually directly writing code. For every single algorithm or data structure that we talk about in this series, I will end up having an episode where I've written the code out for it, possibly have written even multiple ways in which you can solve it, as well as then also provide that for you in the comments, and I'll go over it during that episode. However, many of the episodes are going to be us discussing theory about it, different approaches to it, why different approaches work, why different approaches fail, and examining what makes certain algorithms good and bad, and what you can end up using as different metrics to compare why you would want to use one algorithm over a different algorithm when you happen to be dealing with certain problems that you're trying to solve, or why you would use one data structure versus a different data structure, and how those end up changing depending on things such as how many different items you have in there, whether those number of items is constant or whether it's changing frequently. And all of those are different things that will impact your decision as to what type of algorithms and data structures you use in your code in the future. However, because, as I said, the majority of these episodes are going to be me discussing theory about it, are going to probably be in paint or the like, in which I'm going over different examples that way, it doesn't make sense to have it as part of the programming series. It also is a bit more easy for people to navigate and find these specific episodes without having to go through that particular series. This series is going to heavily rely upon things we've already covered in my programming series, so in case you haven't watched that or in case you don't have a good understanding of the way in which dynamic memory allocation works, I.O. works, and different things such as that, you're going to have a bit of a hard time dealing with this, but you can always go back through the series I've written. You can read other books on it. You can see other series on that. And this one here is going to be primarily about covering the assorted different theory behind different algorithms and what makes them good, such as in the next episode, we're going to be going over what's known as big O notation and complexity. And these are things that basically any serious computer science job is going to require you to know about. There's plenty of jobs out there that don't, but if you want to work for somewhere such as Amazon or Google or Microsoft or anywhere else that is doing really large amounts of data or really large amounts of research, you need to understand big O notation fairly thoroughly and what it ends up being used for. And we're even going to get into things such as minimum complexity and average complexity to a certain extent. Those, those are more, well, minimum complexity is not necessarily more complicated in order to compute, but it happens to be less useful than big O notation is. So let's get into some definitions for what we're going to be covering in this. An algorithm is just a series of steps in order to solve some problem. So if you go to somewhere like Google Maps and you input, here's my current location, here's the location that I'm trying to get to, what it then has to do is it has to figure out a path from one to the other and figure out what the fastest path there is. And typically it's going to end up using stuff such as what are known as graphs behind the scenes. It could do a bit of 3D math logic, but in general it makes more sense to be using graphs for this. And for that we'll end up getting into that and we'll get into things such as Dijkstra's algorithm for basically finding the minimum path between two points in a graph. And we'll get into a whole bunch of other algorithms that we end up using throughout there. So even things such as in case I want to and we've gone over things such as searching within our linked list and sorting over in here where we have merge sort and here we have our linked list merge sort. Merge sorting and how you end up sorting a list is itself an algorithm. And that just is we have some goal that we want to achieve and the algorithm is what are the steps we are going to take to achieve that goal. And there's many different valuable things that you can take a look at in terms of what makes one algorithm better than another one, and it's going to be very highly dependent on your situation, on your hardware, and on what you're actually looking to optimize for. Then, for data structures, those are things such as linked list. And the name data structure is pretty obvious, because what it is is it's a structure that is designed to hold data. So in a linked list, what you have is you have 
a whole bunch of different links that are containing data. And the major value of this data structure is that you do not need a giant contiguous block of memory to represent it in case you add in additional elements beyond that size of your current contiguous block. It's not necessarily going to be a problem for you. There are some significant problems for this, and when we get into things such as what page faults are, in case you have a really large linked list, and the same thing could be true for a very large array, but for a linked list in particular, you're more likely to end up having page faults than you are with an array. And we've already gone over things such as some of the things that make our merge sort on linked lists a bit less efficient than what we were doing with just arrays because our merge sort for arrays was really, quite frankly, fairly simple to do. And that's really what it is, that in case you remember what an array is, even that can be considered a data structure. It's a very simple, one of the most simple data structures out there. It just is, give me enough memory for some object A, and then give me another one of that same type of object down below it, and continue until I have enough space to contain the number of objects I want. And we're going to be getting into a ton of different ones that are out there, and they're used very frequently for things such as operating systems. They're used for pretty much any advanced algorithms or representations of data. So we're going to get into those in the future, and they'll help you understand the way your operating system works, the way that databases work. And really, your operating system sort of relies on some database theory for how it ends up working. But It'll also help you with things such as how things such as Google works, both in terms of Google Maps, Google Images. It'll help you out in terms of understanding how different data is stored in the programs you use for things such as Minecraft, for really any game that you happen to enjoy. And that's going to be the focus of this series, is it's going to be focused on those different techniques that are used to either store data or to analyze data. In the future, I may end up splitting off AI from this, though to be fair, AI also fits fairly well within the algorithm section and, to a certain extent, the data structure section of this series of episodes. So I think that's enough for now. What I would ask you to do is I would ask you to think about the different types of ways in which you could sort an array. And we'll just stick with an array for now because arrays are very simple to deal with. But think of the different ways in which you could possibly try sorting it. In the next episode, we're going to be using those as examples in order to understand big O notation and complexity and what the different values are over, of different types of sorting algorithms. So thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.